Hi, everybody. I think we're live. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone. I'm glad that you guys are all here. Uh, we will be starting in just a couple of minutes, but I wanted to kind of say hi, let you guys all know that I'm here. <laughs> and uh, we'll give everybody else some time to get here. But in the meantime, uh, I wanted to make sure you guys know that there is a giveaway going on right now. Um, you need to enter for it before uh, the end of the training. So if you haven't entered the giveaway, it's down below uh, the, the video. There's a little place where you can go and enter your information and you will be able to win a class from me, my first uh, official class, which is kind of fun. So let's see. Um, yeah, make sure you go do that. It will be closing within a half hour, so uh, make sure that you get that in there and entered so that you can be a part of the drawing. And let's see, what else? Okay, for those of you that are new, on the right side of your screen, you should be able to see a chat box. Uh, you can go in there and say hello. And, oh, I forgot to pull up my chat box. I'll have to do that in just a minute. Um, but yeah, you can go and chat and say hi. If you have any questions for me throughout the training, that's where you're going to ask those questions. If for some reason your chat box isn't working properly, you can actually leave a comment down at the bottom. Uh, there, there should be a comment section where you can uh, talk and, and enter your questions there. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So yeah, if the chat box doesn't work, you should be able to to get your questions in also. So yeah, I hope you guys like the training today. I think it's going to be cool. I um, On Facebook, we did a poll to see who wanted what. And I, it was between a cake that was in the shape, like a, a little mini cake, shaped like a little sweetheart, you know, the little conversation hearts. And uh, I guess the 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 rose won out, <laughs> so we did that. And also, as I'm trying to pull up this class, hang on a minute. Um, also, you guys have sorry, lean. Okay, all right. So we have a class now that we are just releasing today, and. Um, I want you guys all to know about that. It is going to be lots of fun. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, it's it's basically along the same lines of what I'm teaching today. Uh, it's a long stem gum paste rose, and I actually show how to um, make the, the actual stem and put leaves on it and, and the calyx and all of that, and then we uh, decorate the cake to go along with it. So. It's, it should be fun. And, all right, we got our chat box up. Someone just asked, are you wearing a baker's jacket? And if so, where did you get it? So I am so excited for the chef's coat. I, my, my old chef's coat, the one that uh, you may have seen before, it's in, in the video that, in the class that I did. Um, I'm wearing, it's a gray one with pink, and I've, I've never put the Cake Foo logo on it because it's pink, and the Cake Foo logo is not pink <laughs> or even close, so I needed to get a new chef's coat, and this is, um, I just got it yesterday, so excited, uh, from uh, Peg's Premier Products is where it's from. Peggy Tucker's sister, Sally is the, the person who, she is, she's amazing, it's, it's really good, high quality, and she makes them, and, and Peggy Tucker sells them, and, and so Peg's Premier Products, shout out to Peggy, <laughs> and Sally, so yeah, I we're going to get, I'm going to get my, you know, cake the logo, finally, so excited, um, okay, so we are ready to get started here. We'll pause for just a minute for editing purposes, and then we'll get started.
Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Cake Food Masters series. I'm Amelia Carbine. Uh, I'm really, really happy that you guys are all here today. I know that we have a huge interest in, in what is being taught today, and so I, I hope you guys are happy with the way things go, and I, I hope that you guys can learn from me. Uh, a little bit about myself. I am a cake decorator, been decorating for about 14 years. I think, I think about 14 years. Uh, so it's been a while, and um, it's uh, I have done some competing. I competed in TLC's Ultimate Cake Off, and uh, as a, a lead competitor, my team was amazing. We didn't win, but you know we had a technical difficulty. <laughs> and uh, let's see, I I also competed the the one that I find and that I consider the most prestigious one that I competed in was the Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show, the Grand National Wedding Cake Competition. Uh, I, I decided to enter, uh, after having a business for about a year, I needed to know how good I was so that, I mean, a lot of us, we, we underprice ourselves and um, and I don't think that it's fair. I, I don't think it's right. It's not fair to us, and it's not fair to the other cake decorators out there who are um, trying to to charge the, the right prices. And so I knew I was under undercharging, but I I didn't. I was worried about how good I was, and you know, or or not. <laughs> and so I kind of just wanted to know how good I was, how how I stacked up with everybody else. So I, I bit the bullet and I entered the Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show. Uh, I drove all the way there, 20 hour drive with this cake. And you know, after spending hundreds of hours on, on this cake, and as soon as I pulled up, I wanted to turn around and drive home. It was just, I, it was the scariest thing ever. <laughs> and so I thought, what am I doing here? I don't belong here. Anyway, I entered, ended up taking third runner up out of the whole wedding division which was super, super amazing, and I was just shocked and blown away. And I entered the next year and received fourth runner-up. So um, those are the only two years I've, I've competed. I haven't been back since. Um, but to place in the top five, the two years that I did compete, was pretty, pretty amazing to me. And um, one thing that, that I, I wanted to share about that competition was the, the sugar flowers. Uh, the first year that I competed, that when I placed um, third runner up, the the theme was actually the language of flowers. So really, the competition was about flowers. So to have placed third runner up on you know making a cake that's basically centered around flowers was uh, pretty pretty impressive. So uh, I think I have a, a little bit of uh, knowledge and um, uh, I guess. Uh, I don't know what the word is, just uh, authority, I guess, a little bit, <laughs> on how to make uh, gum paste flowers. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, the, the flower that I made, they I actually watched the judging, which is so intimidating. Don't I, I don't know if I would recommend that to anybody. Um, but I watched as they were judging my cake, and they actually had to have somebody uh, come in with a, with a book to – you know, look up and see uh, if these magnolia flowers that I did were actually botanically correct. Because if they weren't, I was not going to win the competition. And so, you know, they they found that there was a variety of of the magnolia that was, you know, um, that was actually my uh, my actual flower. It worked. Uh, but I learned from there when I made that flower, it, it was. I watched somebody else make that, and then I made the same flower. And so I learned from that situation that I can't depend on somebody else to tell me that this is the right way, you know, to um, to make a flower completely botanically correct. And so I learned from that that I needed to figure out how to make flowers, you know, very botanically correct on my own because I, I wanted to make sure that it was right. <laughs> And so the next year I competed, I did a, a few different flowers that were needed to Bermuda because it was the theme of my cake, and I just made sure that they were botanically correct. I created the flower 
headers myself. I created everything myself so that it was so that it was right. <laughs> and I don't have any pictures of those cakes. I should have pulled them up. Um, but anyway, here is the flower that I'm going to be teaching today. Uh, if you guys can see, oh, I need to click this one. There you go. There's the rose. And uh, the, the rose that I'm going to teach you today, uh, if you can see in the center, it's a little bit darker than the rest of the, the flower. Uh, I actually uh, do that on purpose. That's naturally how a rose looks. And so it's darker in the center. It gets lighter as you go out. So I actually start with a darker a shade of gum paste. And then I do a, a second lighter and then a third lighter. So I, I actually um, have three different colors of gum paste here that I'm going to uh, work with. So, um, and also, oh, I have to throw in here the, the class. I have to show you guys the, the picture of, well, let's see. I have to see the picture of the cake that we do in the class. There we go. So that's the cake right there. It is um, just a, a round 8-inch cake with the three different colors. And uh, let's see, there's uh, some rose petals that I made into a heart on top. And then those same rose petals end up making a flower on the bottom. And I show you how to do a gradient airbrush effect on the side of the cake in that uh, cute teal color. So that's the class. Uh, for those of you that are, that are interested, that class is um, the, the class is going to be uh, the, okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> we have a, um, the video is pretty much all the way ready to go. I, I um, didn't want to stay up all night finishing the editing, so it's not completely ready to go. We have three of the five modules all, all edited and ready to go. So if you do purchase the class right now, make sure that you understand that you will be getting it tonight, <laughs> uh, tomorrow at morning at the latest. And because of that, we are actually going to have a discount uh, on, on it right now, only for the next 48 hours. So if you want a, a chance at getting a discount on this class, we're taking it all the way down to $19.99 for you. So, so but because it's a little bit uh, late, I, uh, I will cut off quite a bit. So regular price is going to be $13.99. If you, if you run grab it right now, it'll be $19.99. And, and you will get it tonight or tomorrow. So, okay. So that's that. <laughs> oh, and for those of you that weren't here at the beginning, we have a giveaway going on right now. If you scroll down, you can see the, um, the, the giveaway little spot where you can enter for that. Make sure you do that right away because within the next about 20 minutes, it's going to be closing, and um, and we'll pick a winner from there. So don't wait until the end of the training or you won't have a chance. So, okay, now we are going to go ahead and get started on this training. Let's see. Pull that off here so you can see me. Okay, so here's our setup. Let me see if I can move that back a little bit. All right, here's our setup. We've got uh, we've got a cell board, which is a a board that has it's it's from Cell Cakes brand. Uh, it's got grooves in it, and in the in my video, I actually show you two different ways to do uh, to wire your flowers, so that uh, if you don't have a cell board, you can still um, you can still do flowers, but uh, it this also has a smooth side that we will be using to start. Uh, we will use both sides today for the rows. Okay, so then we have a rolling pin, nice rolling pin. We have our flower cutters, uh, the rose petal cutters. There are three different sizes here, uh, small, medium, and large. And uh, let's see, we have a cell board. Well. Not a cell board. It's not cell. It's not cell cakes brand. It is a Teco brand. 
and it's nice and big. I really like it. Okay, and then also let's see, we've got a ball tool, metal ball tool always, and uh, we've got exacto knife, uh, and then we've got some little uh, cuticle scissors, and we're going to use those. We have a paintbrush, and with a little bit of water right here, and then let's see, we have our veiners. Uh, these veiners, just so you know, this one is. Um, this one is by Diane Gruenberg. Well, Diane Gruenberg sells them. And uh, let's see. Sweet. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of her shop. It's in the video. <laughs> um, anyway, Diane Gruenberg. Just Google her. She'll, she'll be able to let you know where to find it. It's actually a poppy veiner. But I like to use it for a rose because it's kind of got a soft veining that I like. You don't have to vein a rose, but I do. And then, let's see, this is a, a leaf and dogwood veiner. This one is from Jennifer Dance. They actually both come with double-sided, it's a double-sided veiner set. Um, but I have lost my leaf veiner on the other side. So I'm going to show you how, um, it's kind of convenient for you, because I'm going to show you how to vein with a single-sided veiner. Um, some shortening, in case you need it. Some gum paste, like I said, three different colors. Uh, we've got some floral wire or, and floral tape. Our, our wire is right here, just a couple pieces. And then we've got needle nose pliers. Like that. And then we have our um, yeah, wire cutters. I think. Oh, and a piece of plastic so that you can cover your work. Uh, this is actually a piece of vinyl, but yeah, plastic vinyl. You can use to ran wrap whatever. Just as long as it's covered so that your gum paste doesn't dry out. Okay, so now we get started. We are going to start by doing a um, heart shaped or a teardrop shape. Um, I'm not going to show you how to make this because I think everybody in the world knows how to make this. It's just a teardrop made out of gum paste that you put on a, on a plier. In fact, I will show you how to prepare the wire. That's one thing I will show you. So this is an 18 gauge wire. Um, if you're going to be doing flowers for an arrangement, you might want to use a, a thinner gauge wire because you're adding other wire to it. Um, but um, this one's an 18 gauge because I do the long stem rows. I want it to be nice and sturdy. So yeah, so 18 gauge. Just cut. I always cut my wires to a third of the size of the wire. Um, they're, these are the wires that they're the, I guess they're probably about a 14 inch, you know, 14 inches long is what I'm guessing that they are. I don't have a ruler, but that's what they look like, 14, 16 inches. So anyway, I cut them into thirds so that um, I'm not wasting a lot of wire. And that's all the size you'll really need. Sometimes if I'm doing really small flowers, I'll cut it into fourths but thirds for, for, you know, most flowers. And then um, you, you do the, the teardrop shape, a gum paste, and then you're going to take some wire cutters, if you can see that, or not, some uh, needle nose pliers. Not great at naming my tools, I guess. All right, so needle nose pliers just on the very end, very tip right here, and you're just going to kind of twist it around like that so it makes a little hook. Just a little miniature little shepherd's hook. And that is going to uh, help you to keep your, your wire inside the gum paste. Um, to get it to stick, you can either put water. I know some people actually heat it with a blowtorch and then stick it in and it melts the sugar and it uh, ends up drying faster and stays stronger. So that's that. So now we've got our little base here, and we're going to start with our darkest color of red. Okay. So to get a really good dark color of red, you're going to have to add quite a bit of food coloring, and uh, it's okay. It's not. It's not going to ruin <laughs> ruin your gum paste. 
it, it all depends on the you know, quality of gum paste too. But. Okay, so it is kind of soft, but that's good. We want gum paste to be soft. All right, so here's our gum paste. We're going to roll it out. And we need to roll it super, super, super thin. Oh, and about conditioning your board, um, you can put some shortening on it. If you really feel like you need to, you can um, you can put some some uh, cornstarch down. I, I don't use cornstarch in my flour making very often. Uh, every once in a while, if if it's just so soft that I just need to, then I will. But for the most part, my my gum paste, you know, is is a pretty good, you know, consistency. The the board it has been seasoned. All you do is just take a, a tiny bit of shortening, rub it on, wipe it off, and then it's conditioned. If it gets dirty and you need to um, clean it, just soap and water. Yeah, hold this. Um, just soap and water, and then again, little tiny bit of shortening on it. We'll get it right back to where you need it to be. Don't add gobs of shortening. Don't add tons of, you know, anything. This this board is a really good quality board. You know, and you just it it works without anything. Okay, someone's asking what brand of rose cutters I use. Um, these. <laughs> These right here are just a very generic, um, I, can't, I don't even know the name brand of them. I, when I bought them, they were actually skinnier and I widened them. I did have um, Sunflower Sugar Art is the brand that, that I had originally and I love them. They're wonderful, but I lost one of the sizes. Um, that tends to happen when, when you travel <laughs> with all of your stuff. Often, so these are just an off-brand um, that I ended up widening because they were thinner than I, skinnier than I wanted them to be. So that's another thing: is don't be afraid to alter your cutters if you want to. I mean, if it doesn't, if it's you know too fat and you want it skinnier, squish it in. If you want it bigger, open it up. You know, don't don't be afraid. Just don't mess up the cutter. <laughs> is all. Okay, so we're gonna roll this out. And the key to getting a, a really good rose is to go super, super, super thin on your gum paste. Okay, and I'm going to stop, stand up here so I can get some leverage. Okay, so as you can see, it's already pretty thin, and I think this is about where most people would stop, but I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to just make it really, really thin. Um, you just go and you keep rolling and keep going until, uh, if you have a lighter gum paste, you should actually be able to see the speckles through the board. Um, that's how thin you want it to be. If, you know, it's the darker gum paste, you can't really gauge it by that. But um, you just roll, and then when you think you're done, you roll some more. Because, yeah. Okay, I may not get to try this in today because I don't want to spend forever rolling out gum paste for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our smallest gum paste cutter, and then we're going to, okay, so I showed on the video a couple of different ways to, um, to cut uh, your gum paste. A lot of times uh, the cutters are not the best quality. Sometimes you can get really good ones. Um, I know Diane Gruenberg's are super, super thin metal, and they cut really, really well. Uh, so, um, but if you set it down and you try to cut it and you pull away, I mean, this is a pretty decent cutter right here, so it's not going to show very well. Um, sometimes you get those, you know, gunky edges, you know. I, I really didn't here. But if that's a problem, then just take your cutter pick it up, lay it down, and then take your, uh, your uh, rolling pin and roll it across and that, that will cut off the edges and then you just take your finger and smooth it along there and that cuts off all of the junk. So that's a, a tip for, for you. I actually do that when I'm doing my competition flowers because I just want to you know, have that guarantee that absolute guarantee 
that um, that it's going to be nice and, and clean. So I'm going to cut out six of these really fast. Usually I'll only do three in each of these, but I need to hurry here so you guys can see the whole thing. So. And then someone else asked, um, have you tried the styrofoam rosebuds? I actually haven't. I've always used the gum paste. Um, I know that it would make a lighter flower, not quite as heavy, but I just never have. I don't think that far enough ahead to be able to, you know, you know to order them. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, to be completely honest with you, I've just never, never done it. Okay, no, oh, I need that one. Hold on. Okay, so then make sure you cover that so that it's not going to dry out on me. All right, I think that was our, this is our color. All right, so then we're going to take our little thing here, and oh, hang on. we gotta do one thing first. We need to take our uh, first little petal, and we're going to. Uh, you really don't need to vein this one, but. I do it. I, I just am um, one of those people that I have to do it with all of them. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so then you're going to put it on your board here, and then you're going to just soften the edges. We are not going to ruffle this at all. So, we're just going to take our ball tool and just kind of soften the edges, just go right along the edges. And that's going to make a nice uh, edge there so it doesn't look like it was cut. That's that's the purpose of doing that. We really don't want it to ruffle on this on this petal. Okay, so then we're going to put some water on our petal. We're gonna go and we're gonna stick it on just so it's down just below. You know it to be about a quarter, well between a quarter and to an eighth inch above, and we're going to take the gum paste. I'm going to mention the giveaway one more time now. Oh, okay. Um, I've got a reminder. Five minutes till the end of the giveaway. So if you haven't entered for the giveaway, make sure you go down and enter for the giveaway. So, um, yeah, five more minutes. <laughs> Just so you know. Okay, um, so then we're wrapping it around, and then we're going to keep going and make sure it's closed up. Uh, the, the best thing you can do is to get that to close up. You really don't want to see the white on the inside of that. Okay, so there you go. You've got your little start. Don't worry about this. It's going to be covered. If you use the same color of base, then you can not worry at all, but you really don't need to worry. Okay, so then we're going to take two of our petals now. And we're going to vein them a little bit, just real fast. And then again we're going to just thin these. Nothing nothing to it. I should probably put another one, but I don't want to waste your time. So <laughs> we're just gonna pretend that's not torn. Okay, so then we're gonna thin these ones out again. Um, you don't want to ruffle these too much. If you get a little bit of ruffle, that's okay. It's not a big deal. But uh, just soften the edges, really. All right, so this one, these ones, we're actually going to work them together. That's why I pulled them out together. So we're going to take our uh, water, and we're going to put water on the, the bottom part of these petals. And we're going to overlap them before we put them on. Okay, so we're going to just kind of overlap. They're going to be pretty close together. So about a fourth of the way in is when you're going to do your overlap. And I do this all. Some people will do it on the flower, but I like to do it just right here 
and not have to worry about it. Okay, so we're going to just take it and set it on here. Make sure it's level with your bud, and then we're just going to wrap it around. Okay, and then you can see that we've got, open this part up just a tiny bit, and you can see that we've got a nice start. Um, you can notice that they're not perfectly, you know, perfectly symmetrical, and that's okay because, you know, they're not supposed to be, really, because that's not nature. All right, so there we've got our start. Um, we're not going to do very much messing around with, you know, the, you know, bending and curving and all that right now because these are just these are just brand new. They haven't had time to get messed up, so they're perfect. Okay. All right. So then we're going to do the same thing with the next three petals. Okay. All right, so vein them. Okay, and I'm just going to pretend that I veined these because I don't want to take too long. Oh, my gosh, that. Okay, so they're veined. <laughs> and then we're going to soften these again. Um, by the way, if you do use um, any cornstarch, it's going to be right here because it could stick to your your board, or if it sticks to your metal, use uh, the cornstarch, not shortening on this stuff. So. All right, so we're going to do kind of the same thing we did before. We're going to put water on the bottom part. Don't go on the top because that's where um, they're supposed to be seen. And we're going to go about halfway this time. We're going to go about halfway and set it down. Okay. And then put some more water on. And then again go halfway. Okay. Oh, I my water. <laughs> All right. And then, again, we're going to just take this. We're going to put it on here. Again, you want it to be all level. Um, you don't want it turning into a cabbage. And then we're just going to wrap it around, just like we did with the three. And you'll see that they start to overlap each other. If you get some higher than the others, you can you know, kind of move them around a little bit. And so here's where we're going to actually start messing with things a little bit. Not much. We're going to take these um, ends here and we're going to bend them down a little bit and curve them. Maybe do a little pinch going inward right here and then you know pull this one out. So it's it, just mess around with it. Don't be afraid to get some movement going. Okay. So there we go. And I could sit here and mess with this for, you know, 10 minutes. <laughs> but I won't because I, you know, you can move on. Okay, so then after we've done those three, we're going to do uh, four petals in, oops, sorry. We're going to do four petals in the medium color and the medium size. I've got my gum piece set up a little too much. Uh, somebody asked what color of red I used for this. Um, I actually used a little bit of the uh, Wilson No Taste Red, and I used um, Americolors Super Red. And I think that the Americolors Super Red did better at getting the red that I wanted. But it's it, this is actually a combination of both. So. Okay, and I'm going to roll these out. Roll it out really fast. It may not be as thin as I normally get it, but like I said, we don't want to take forever. All right, and then we're going to cut out our medium size. So again, medium color, medium size. And let's see. 
We're going to end up doing five more. So I'm going to cut out, well, Yeah, that wasn't the best cutting job or rolling out job, whatever. Okay, there you go. And they're not, they are not even close to as thin as they should be. Make sure you roll them thin. <laughs> All right, so then we're going to take four at a time and bang them and, and stuff. So make sure that your gum paste is a fairly you know, soft consistency and, and one that doesn't dry terribly fast. Okay. Um, someone's asking how do you make a really dark red rose. Um, if you want to get even darker than this, it's really hard to do. Um, I would recommend actually adding just more of a black color to um, not, not necessarily to your gum paste, but in, when you're coloring it. I'm messing up the bottoms of these. I would usually be more careful, but it's okay. Oops. Okay, so now we have four of them. And these ones we're going to ruffle quite a bit more than the others. Okay, so we want it to have some ruffling to it. You know, there are some people that uh, try to say, oh, you should ruffle them before you vein them, and then some people say ruffle them after you vein them. You can do both. You can do whichever one you want. I tend to ruffle them after, but if you roll the, the gum paste out super thin, you won't see the, the lines from, from ruffling it out, so it's okay. All right, so these ones we're actually going to put on individually uh, because I want, I want to place them a little bit more the way I want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to just paint the first lower half of it. So if you, you know, cut it into quadrants, you're just doing the lower left uh, quadrant, I guess, using math terms. All right, so we're just going to stick that on, and it really doesn't matter so much where you stick this one on. Um, and then we're just going to kind of hold it while we uh, paint some water on the next one. And we're going to set that one about halfway and put that on. And we'll do the same thing all the way around. Okay. So a little bit of water on the lower fourth. And if they kind of plop down a little bit, that's okay. That's okay. Don't worry too much about that right now. You have time to position things a little bit and uh, let them dry. Before they dry, I guess I should say. Okay, so now that you've done that, you should have um, some gum paste that is fairly uh, flexible, fairly able to, you know, do what you want it to do. We're going to start curling. Um, if you can see, we're doing kind of a spiral effect because we're placing the gum paste on the inside as we go. And, and so we're able to do this uh, kind of a spiraling thing. Uh, one really big thing that you'll see in roses is these little pinch marks, you'll see that they curl down. They don't just, you know, bend, they actually curl down. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. These ones are still pretty, um, pretty new too. And so you don't need to mess with them too much, but you want to start the effect of the curling and the, you know, the movement. Okay. So this one I'm going to just kind of curl this way. And you don't want to make them perfect. You don't want to. Um, if you think, oh, this petal has to be exactly the same as the last one that I just did, you're thinking wrong because that's not the way the flowers look and, and are. Okay, so we've kind of just curled and done our thing here. Some of these. 
Okay, so there you go, we've got that. Um, normally we would do another row of five. And I think we might have time to do it. We'll do it. Okay. And, and these ones, like I said, they don't need to be coming out too far. They're still pretty, you know, pretty new, just opening up. Okay? All right, so then we've got, I've got to roll up a little bit more. Let's see if I can do this with those ones there. Let's see, we have more questions. Um, someone's asking what brand of gum paste I use. Okay, you guys are going to think that I'm just crazy because I should be a major professional paint decorator that uses the highest end of gum paste. This is Wilton. <laughs> I've used a, a bunch of different uh, brands of, of gum paste and I like, I do have my favorites. Um, Oh, I can't think of the name brand of it, but it's the kind that Diane Grunberg sells. Uh, it's a really great quality brand. I really like uh, James Russell's brand. It's uh, the Fonderific brand. It's really, really good. Uh, Satinize is okay. I know some people love it. I don't know. I don't know. I've tried the really high-end brands, though, and some of them just don't. And they're, they're crumbly, and I don't like them. But I have found, honestly, that Wilton is it is good enough for me. I, I've been able to work with it and do whatever I want with it. I think that if you have the, the skill set, yeah, pretty much any brand of gum paste is going to work for you. All right. So we're going to do the five. And someone's asking what the name of the octagon board is again. It's um, it's just a foam board. I don't know if it has a, a proper name, but it is a Teco brand. Uh, the A T E C O. It's a it's a pretty common cake decorating tool brand, a Teco. But I like it because it's long. If you're going to be doing like a cake with ruffles, then I mean it's it's long enough that you can you know do some ruffling with that. So. And I can fit a lot of petals on it, which I really like. <laughs> okay. Um, asking about the Daners again. Uh, this one right here is Diane Grunberg. Avenue, Avenue Sweet Choices, that's what it is. I, I couldn't think of the name of it at the beginning. But yeah, that's her website is Avenue Sweet Choices. Uh, it is the Poppy Daner is what this one is. Because it's, I, I like how it, it just does a really soft vein instead of the really deep. Because roses really don't have deep veins. Okay, so these ones we're going to ruffle quite a bit more. I'm going to get in there and ruffle them. Uh, these are so thick. <laughs> don't do this. Don't roll them out this thick. But I just didn't want to spend forever rolling them out for you. All right. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did before with um, putting water on the lower bottom board. And I'm just going to kind of stick them on. And I hold it there. Uh, this, this part is kind of flapping down. We're going to set this one up on the, on the um, base and kind of keep wrapping. But you're putting the, the petals on the inside of the last petal so that it, they do that spiraling motion that roses naturally do. Okay. All right. So. All right. And if you look at it, it's not. 
you know, a lot of people's roses will look about like that. Um, they, they don't take the steps of actually messing enough with the petals. So that's, that's really the, the key to getting a good natural looking rose is to just really start playing with and messing with the petals. Don't be afraid to, you know, work with it and play with it. Okay. And these ones are getting to be a little bit more brave. They're ruffling out. You've got more pinching, more uh, character, I guess you could say. I just keep messing with them. Okay. And something that you see a lot with roses is that they, they do have that curving in the middle. Um, and, and you want to be able to, you know, kind of simulate that a little bit in, in the flowers. So that's why, that's why I've been pinching them in the middle, is because then you can get a nice uh, kind of an arch. Back. Okay. And if I had you know, the time, I would mess with this a little bit more. And you do have some time, because if you set this down right after putting them on, your petals are going to fall off. So you have, you have to take the time to let it set up a little bit anyway. So you might as well mess with it a little bit, get it to go and do what you want it to do. So don't be, don't be shy. <laughs> If you start to notice that your gum paste is um, is starting to dry out, then that's about the time when you have to stop messing with it because otherwise you're going to start getting the cracking and you know all of that that you really don't want. Um, if you see that your your petals are getting a little too stuck in the middle, you can actually take something and kind of stick it down in there and kind of move it out. Because the petals don't, you know, stick all the way. Okay. All right. That one's not doing what I wanted to. I'll just put it somewhere. All right. So that's that. And I would sit here and hold this for a couple of minutes. If you don't have the time, you can actually turn it upside down and curve your wire, hang it on something, and let it dry. Um, I didn't happen to bring that right, you know, at the moment. So, um, and then the last thing we're going to do is a petal of, uh, or a row of petals with our lightest color of gum paste, and it, they are going to be veined uh, because that really, you know, brings the the rose into that nice full blossom. Okay, so. What we're going to do is take our lightest color of gum paste. Um, okay. It is getting a little bit stiff here. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit hard to roll. All right, so we have all five grooves here. There is a smaller board that has like three or four, um, and then there's this vein or this uh, groove up here. You don't uh, necessarily have this one if you buy the smaller brand. It, it doesn't really matter all that much. The one thing I do like about the bigger board is that these grooves are spaced a little further apart, which I really like because then I can use the, the bigger petal cutters. All right, so then we're going to just roll a log, and we're going to lay it across here so that we can do two at a time. You can make a big enough log that you can do five at a time if you really want to, um, but I'm just doing two to show you guys. So this is the way that I like to vein my flowers. I, I do show a couple of other methods of veining flowers on the video, um, but I'm just going to show you this one today because it's the one that I that I use. Okay, so we're going to just roll it out. It's going to let the gum paste work its way into these grooves. You don't need to get it perfectly finished. But, um, and yes, it set it off the edge because I wanted to cut off right here. So we're going to take our veins 
and or our, our wires, sorry. And we're going to just stick them right where those right where those grooves are. I'm just going to kind of press them in so that they're level. Just like that. And then I'm just going to take the gum paste and fold it over and, and roll it again. So I don't know if anybody else uh, does flowers this way. I, I really don't know. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of came up with this on my own. So if somebody out there does this method, then we think alike. <laughs> But anyway, this is how I do it. And so you just roll it until it's thin again. And that encases the wire so that you don't have to, you know, insert it somehow. Okay, so then to cut them, you can't really peel it off and, and cut it or whatever because then you're, you know, you've got wire in the way. So I'm actually going to cut it right on the board. And I'm just, just going to cut it here. And then I'm going to use my X-Acto blade, and I'm going to just kind of cut down here, and I'm going to pull away the gum paste around. You want to make sure that you leave the cutter in while you're pulling away this part, otherwise you run the risk of pulling the wire out um, of your gum paste. And you don't want to do that, because <laughs> then you have to start all this. Okay. All right, so there you go. Pull that away. And I'm only showing you two because I already have some that are done. Uh, these ones, you, you kind of want them to be dry. There, there is a way that you can do it with them wet, but, you know, yeah, I, I do them dry. Okay, so we're going to do the, the same idea. I'm going to vein them. And then we're going to put them on our board and ruffle them. And we're going to actually ruffle these quite a bit. I mean, we're not going to go crazy with it, but you want them to ruffle. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to show you guys. Ah, the cuticle scissors. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take the cuticle scissors, and we're going to cut little notches into our petals, just in random places. And that is going to give a very much more natural look to your petals. Uh, I'm not going to do a ton of that right now because we don't have a ton of time, but um, you do that to some of your uh, petals, your bigger petals, and just kind of random places all over the flower. But if you cut these little notches, that's going to give them kind of a natural, uh, uh, yeah, a, a natural look to them like a, a rose does. No rose is absolutely perfect without its notches and blemishes. And so that's why we're doing this, because we want it to look natural. All right, so then just a plastic spoon. Oh, I didn't show you the plastic spoon at the beginning. You need a plastic spoon, seven of them. Um, I know there are some people that take the spoons, cut on, and then glue them to a board. You can absolutely do that, but I'm lazy, so I don't. <laughs> uh, so here we go. We're going to just set the, the wire. The wire can just kind of curve uh, because it's a really thin gauge wire. I didn't tell you, I think it's a 26 gauge wire that I'm using for these ones. Uh, the, the base one is 18 gauge, but these are 26. You need a really nice thin wire. Okay, and then we're just going to kind of curve these and let it do its thing. And uh, a lot of bending and just messing with and making it do what you want it to do. So that's that's about what they're going to look like. And then you just let them sit and dry for a little while. So I'm not going to show you all of those because you already have some pre-made. Okay, and I made them right before things started. So they're not, they're not petals that have been sitting drying for a whole day. I mean, this isn't something that you have to do a week in advance before you can actually put the flower together. I honestly did these about an hour ago. So um, if you have a thin enough gauge wire, you're going to be okay. 
and you know it, it will be fine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our, our rows that we have so far, and they, they curved a little bit more than I'm used to, but that's okay. So we're going to take these wires, just kind of bend them right at the end, and then we're going to start sticking them on the on the rows. And the way that we're going to do that is with some floral tape. So we're going to take a floral tape. We're going to do a little uh, start here. And I don't I don't know if most people start floral wire the way I do, but it's <laughs> the way I did it to start. So we're going to just take that and we're going to work our way around. Um, just the same as these petals spiral, we kind of want these to spiral too. We're not going to go crazy about it. We're not going to freak out and, oh my gosh, this one isn't where it needs to be. Because once the flowers start getting bigger, they really kind of start, you know, oh, more open. They really kind of just start doing their own thing. And so if one's a little bit out of place, it's okay. And especially uh, as you're putting it together, if it moves, it's okay. We can actually move them around because these are very uh, flexible wires and the gum paste is still fairly flexible. It's still pretty soft, actually. And so we're just going to kind of start wrapping around and we're going to put the seven petals on. And if you can see, I am, I'm messing with it a little bit. I'm moving it. I, I wish you could feel how soft this gum paste still is. It's not, it is not set up, it is not stiff and solid. And that's okay. Okay, so here we go. And it looks like I've got four around here. We don't have them exactly even all the way around. That's okay. I'm just gonna keep placing them. And like I said, we can move them and fix and reposition when we get there. <laughs> we will get there when we get there. Right. Okay, we're going to move that one to the side, and that's where we're going to put our last one. Okay. And there we go. And that is pretty much complete rose. Uh, in the video I'm going to show you how to color it and put a calyx on it and make it a long stem rose. Uh, I, I don't have the time right now <laughs> to teach all of that, so um, that's, that's what you're going to get today. But this is the way that I do my rose. Hope you guys, uh, yeah, hope you think that's pretty. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, for those of you that are interested, again, if you missed at the beginning, the class is going to be, um, the regular price is going to be $39.99. And because I don't have it completely edited yet, uh, I, I decided that uh, no matter how much caffeine you drink, you just can't sit in front of a computer for more than 12 hours. <laughs> so I'll finish the editing today. Uh, and because it's not quite done yet, if you order it right now, um, with uh, knowing that I will have it out to you by either tonight or first thing in the morning, then uh, we, we will give it to you for uh, $19.99 for the first 48 hours. So you have 48 hours to get that really awesome price that I won't offer again, but, you know, I, I did uh, take some time <laughs> off. I decided my sleep was important. So... Okay, anyway, that's that. Uh, make sure that you go and take advantage of that deal. Let me put up the, the link right here for you. It is www.kfood.com forward slash long stem roads. And uh, that's where you guys can go and get the class. And also, um, here I will show you guys again the, the whole cake that you will be learning in that class. It is. Uh, an 8 inch cake with some uh, flower petal uh, heart shape things at the top and then a, a flower at the bottom that, that I've just kind of put 
on there on the side. And then also I teach how to do that gradient effect. I even go over how to get, you know, a smooth frosting and, and a, a smooth uh, uh, fondant. Yeah, <laughs> I'm losing my words today. But that is the, the class right there and, and what you learn. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Oh, we need to do the giveaway. All right, we have our winners even already. So yay. Let's see. Looks like our first winner is, let's see. I have to pull it up here. First winner is Patty Mack. So, yay, Patty wins a free class. Congratulations, Patty. The next one is Mary Thompson. Yay. And uh, let's see, Nola from Simply Sweet Shop. So you guys are our three winners today. So you guys uh, get the, the class for free today. So uh, thank you for uh, watching. Congratulations to you guys who, who won. And for those of you that didn't, go take advantage of the sale price. Uh, it will be available for the next 48 hours. So. Uh, thanks guys, this was really fun. I hope you guys learned a lot and I hope you guys can learn more from my, my classes. Okay, we'll uh, talk to you guys next week. Bye.